WMSE's Local Live is supported by Club Garibaldi. Located at 2501 South Superior Street in Bayview. Open seven days a week, Club Garibaldi serves burgers, hot wings, and more. And features live music weekly. For more information and Club Garibaldi's live music events, visit clubgaribaldi.com. All right, and once again, our guest tonight for Local Live is Tarek Sabar. He is getting ready to do a long, extended set for you. So uh, without further ado, live from the Bob and Jeannie Freeman Live Performance Studios, we bring you Tarek Sabar.
this is Nick from Made of Oak and a ton of other Milwaukee bands. You are listening to 91.7 WMSC. This is WMSC. You're tuned in for another edition of Local Live. Our guest tonight is Tarek Sabar, who has joined us in the studio. Welcome. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for the nice beats. Yep. <laughs> that was great. So we were talking a little bit about before the show about you having uh, moved to Madison from Milwaukee. When did you actually move? It was December. Oh, oh. Well, I started living in Madison in late December, but then I completely moved in early January. Okay. So, yeah. So did you move for work or just to... Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the only reason I from Milwaukee to be entirely honest. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that seems like the common reason for people to, to, to move most of the time unless you just need a change of scenery or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. How has uh, the Madison scene been treating you so far? It's okay. I haven't uh, really... S- I mean, I've seen a few shows. It's oddly mostly Milwaukee bands like this last week, and there are a few Milwaukee bands that are playing for various things in in Madison. Okay. And then a few other people that I know that play electronic music, Golden Donna, uh, Joel is in Madison. Um, he's the other person I know. Then people from like Coordinated Suicides, but who he death played with last year, two year, not last year, but two years ago. They're from Madison too, so okay, yeah. So you were pretty familiar, kind of, with the Madison scene already. There's yeah, kind of. I mean, I haven't gone to that many shows, honestly, um, in Madison. Haven't played that many shows in Madison either, really, yet. Um, yeah, at least not in a. While. I mean, I played a few, I guess, but not that many. Yeah. What do you think is the biggest difference you've noticed? I know you haven't been there, living there long, but like between Milwaukee life and Madison life. I mean, it's just. It's less busy, I guess, is the way to put it. Mm-hmm. Madison, I mean, I'm from Kenosha, so Milwaukee was kind of like the big city, at least for me. Um, and Madison's kind of like the halfway in between, where it's like kind of a small city, but then it's like two-minute drive and you're in farm country. And I don't <laughs> feel that's the same way for Milwaukee. It's like even driving between Milwaukee and Kenosha is way different than driving from Milwaukee to Madison. Because like Milwaukee to Kenosha is pretty developed. There's Oak Creek. There's everything else in between. But yeah. There's like nothing but farm country in between, <laughs> like maybe Waukesha and Johnson Creek or something like that. But other than that, it's pretty rural. Yeah, yeah. So, and I know that this is something that I've seen, um, kind of in Milwaukee, is that people will say that like the electronic scene doesn't get the support that it deserves in in Milwaukee. Would you say that that was some, was that your experience when you? I would say so. Yeah, there's a lot of yeah. people that do electronic music. There's like monthly showcases, like. It's like every week of the month. There's Bremenheim, there's Club Ritual, there's Precognition, there's Melt. It's hmm. like almost every weekend there's something else. Uh, Swamp Tours kind of because they do a lot more variety in that. But um, there's like just a lot going on, but turnout's extremely varied. Yeah. It's not nearly the same as, you know, you know, rock shows at like High Dive in terms of turnout, which is like guaranteed if there's a rock show at High Dive, probably a billion people are going to show up. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but in, you know, other places like quarters, even cactus club, a venue that I like playing a lot, um, depends entirely on the show who's playing or what else is going on that night. Yeah. So it's, uh, I, you know, I wish there's a lot more going on, but, or at least a lot more in support, but you know, that's just the way it is. Maybe 10 <laughs> years from now or something. Yeah. So. And yeah. I have noticed that like, it seems like the shepherd has been covering a little bit more electronic late, like the past yeah, half a year or so, yeah, which for is sure. probably helpful. Yeah. I mean, even like they had that article in modular addict about modular addict, uh, what was it? Two weeks ago now mm-hmm. they've had articles before. Um, yeah, I mean, it, de- it depends. There's, there's, I, there's a lot going on. It's hard to cover everything in Milwaukee, but there's definitely way more electronic music than there. I think there, at least for me being here, I've only been, or only lived in Milwaukee like seven years out of my life but um it there's a lot more happening like within the last two years than there was when I first moved here so every yeah. little bit helps yeah. as far as coverage I suppose yeah yeah so with the electronic scene in Milwaukee there's kind of like a big club element but you've been you know you commented I read that yeah. you uh enjoy being more on the periphery of the club scene uh, do you f- feel like you have a voyeuristic attitude towards the club scene for any reason in particular, or is it just something that's natural? I mean, I like that the kind of atmosphere that's in there, except the thing for me is like, I'm not a dance person, so I don't dance ever. So it's like weird for me to be like, oh yeah, I go to the club and I'll dance because I, I, I never dance. But I like the atmosphere of like being in a space like that. 
mm-hmm. dark room fog i mean it's kind of just my thing i guess <laughs> so that's really what it comes down to and i've always listened to like a fair amount of electronic music but never in the concept of, like this is something i'm gonna dance to it's just more something i'm like i'm gonna sit here and brood and think about this for a while mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's really what it, i mean that's kind of what i i think i do in terms of my electronic music it's not really dance oriented it could maybe be if it was like a little faster i guess but it's yeah. like whenever I try pumping it into like disco speed or like 160 BPM, it just sounds wrong to me. I'm just like, this is way too fast for me. I can't know. <laughs> so everything's like 110 to like 140 at most. So, yeah. Okay. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's, you tried. <laughs> yeah. you I try every now and then. It's like, even for like shows coming up, I'm just like, I just mean a lot of dance oriented stuff. And I'm just mm-hmm. like, I try so hard, but I'm like, I can't force it. It's just like, yeah. Yeah. Ambient musician making techno is a tough time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so, so what gear are you using to create that bass sound that you have? Um, I mean, it's a lot of analog stuff. There's kind of like wacky pieces of, I, I kind of collect a lot of different elements and then kind of either sample them or use them in a live context. It's usually, it, these days, at least for like drum stuff, it's sampled because... I couldn't possibly pull like every single drum synth module I have and like plug it all together and make sense with it. It's like, I have to be able to, I've definitely had sets of like, I've brought way too much gear. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. Mm -hmm. And I've kind of narrowed it down to being like, this is what the, I can make a bunch of sounds. I can sample them. And then I can also use some element of analog synthesizers or whatever that I can adjust on the fly. So it's not always the same. You kind of get a balance between improvisation and the recorded material. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how often do you spend actually writing, writing and testing out sounds and beats? Um, does it, you know, ever outweigh the time you spend just actually recording or just. It outweighs the time recording by a lot. (laughs) (laughs) I have like stuff that I'm playing that's like not recorded in any way. Mm -hmm. And I've got like patterns upon patterns of stuff that it's just not recorded just because I'm like constantly trying to find the right sounds. And then if something's really good to me, then I'm like, all right, I'm going to record this. Or usually I just like I'm gonna record all these individual parts and then mash it together in a way that makes sense. So, yeah. It's, Do you like sit there for like hours at a time, or is it like diligent like one hour every day? No, it's like hours at a time. Kind of comes and goes. Some days I'll get home and I'll be messing around until like I go to bed, and then other days I'm like. I'll do this for like five minutes and I'm going to go do something else because I can't always just be sitting in my apartment playing synthesizers, I guess. But <laughs> Sadly. <Yeah. laughs> you know, I got to see people. It's the, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> I know with Dead Pawn you did for, didn't you do a tour where you like recorded every night and just like. Yeah, that was a, at, at first it started out like, let's record every night directly to cassette. I brought a whole cassette deck with me. And then I would dub tapes as people wanted to buy them. Then I'm like, this is a lot of time. I did that for like the first two nights. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to, I had brought with a field recorder too, just because I know that cassette's not reliable. Mm. And I recorded everything live to the field recorder anyway. So every night I was recording to the field recorder. And then from there, I kind of just dubbed cassettes as I needed throughout the tour. It's just like, it got this huge thing where I'm just like, I'm going to dub everything on the fly. So people just like have this one recording of this one performance. And then... Yeah, it was just, uh, yeah, I just, it was a lot of hassle, even (laughs) though sometimes I like the hassle, but it's, yeah. You learn what you can handle. Yeah, I'm just like, (laughs) definitely not bringing cassette back on tour again. Probably not the best idea. It was just like, took up space mostly, and I was like, I can't do this. Yeah, Right, and just keep it easy. Yeah. Um, So, are you, I mean, you've been playing out a lot. You are playing out tomorrow, but is this intended to be a recording based experimental project primarily um are you like more do you feel compelled to share with people in a live setting are you more like a studio nerd that's kind of i honestly go back and forth between that a lot (laughs) admittedly it's like if you play a show and there aren't a bunch of people there and sometimes just like maybe i just want to just sit around and record because i'm taking i'm plugging in a bunch of cables every single time i do that i'm like i should just use a laptop but then i don't want to do that because that's not as fun either (laughs) um so it kind of waxes and wanes between being like is the effort worth it to like play live i don't know and sometimes like there's a lot more i could do if i just recorded everything and stopped limiting myself to what i can play live and so it's constant back and forth there's some stuff that i probably down the road will only do recorded releases of i do a lot of that with dead pond for example there's stuff i just straight up can't play live just because of how much there is for this i don't know i'm I'm constantly weighing the 
the options. I don't really know which way I want to go with it. I like if people ask me to play live, then I'm more than likely I'll probably say yes most of the time. Although I try to limit myself to like I can't do it every weekend because it would be just insane. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just really a back and forth. I sometimes I'm like there's a lot more I could do if I just recorded, but then. I, l- I like playing shows, so otherwise, like, what's the point to me? It's like, why would yeah. I just record a bunch of music if I can't play it to so anybody? Just find a balance. Yeah, it's right. like, it's always finding a balance. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Before we get you out for your second set, I have to ask about. There's a couple of tracks up on Bandcamp um, that are listed as. Tarek Sabar's <laughs> Sabar's Odd Order. Yeah. So correct. now, is this like a totally different project, or what uh, happened was when I first did the first like two songs that were released through close up of the serene. I recorded a bunch of other tracks, which are those ones. Um, and then probably a few others, honestly. Um, and at the time, like I didn't know what this project was going to be exactly. It was like, I'm going to do some post punk stuff. That's kind of space with synthesizer drums and all this other stuff. And then kind of guitar and vocals. And I played around with that a few times live and it was just like way too much. Where I'm trying to play guitar and trigger drum loops and mm. sing at the same time. And it was a hassle. And so I stopped doing that and like had all that material recorded and just got rid of it. And then probably about the spring, I was like, I haven't like released anything in a while. And I was recording sitting around. And so I like released, I'm like, I'm going to at least identify that this is me, but also this would be me if I actually had a band. Okay. <laughs> so that's kind of like, I'm like, Odd Order is a cool name. It sounds like New Order, I guess. Um, <laughs> so that's the way I released Never it. To me. it. You know, um, that's how the sausage is made, I guess. But um, it, yeah, I just decided this would be good material for a band if that ever came to be a thing. Probably never just because it's like, I don't, having humans play machine drums is extremely tough, I think. And then not a lot of people want to be doing kick drums on every 16th note for like 10 minutes. No. <laughs> so, <Ouch. laughs> yeah. That'd be so, um, I was just kind of like, I just got to get these tracks out there because I think they're good. I, I like them. They're there. That's yeah. pretty much it. And it's, yeah, it's weird. I had people ask me about that. I mean, I'm just like, there's the other electronic stuff I do too, but <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah, that's exactly what I have with that. All right, the thought process at least to be determined. Possible yeah, future <laughs> who knows band. if there'll ever be a band? I don't know. <laughs> All right. So, well, uh, let's get you back out to play another set for awesome. us. Yep. And, uh, Thank we'll you. Talk a little bit more in a few minutes. All right, sounds good. Thanks, cool. Ken. Yeah. All right, we'll be right back with Local Live. Don't go anywhere. Here's a message from your favorite radio station, WMSE.
what's up, people? This is Juice Box, and you're listening to 91.7 WMSC. You know the drill. Legendary. Yo. All right, it is time for This Is Your Song, the segment on Local Live where we ask our guests to pick a song or an artist that inspires their own stuff. And Tarek Sabar, <laughs> what did you pick? I picked Container Peripheral, I believe is the track. Yeah. Okay. Correct, yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. <laughs> he all does one word track titles. <laughs> They're all very technical sounding. That's so. cool. And um, how did you find out about this artist? Oh, I don't know. Um, I think Aaron Skufka showed me a container live set like years ago. And then like years later, I was like, oh, this is pretty rad. So that was pretty ma- He does like live techno with like a very minimal setup of like an old groove station from the 90s and like a cassette deck. Hmm. And then he just runs everything through a cassette deck and like guitar pedals. And that's like it. Wow. So but he used to be like a noise musician. And now he does like like pretty hard hitting like electronic stuff. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to check out this uh, track called Peripheral from Container, uh, picked by Tarek Sabar here on Local Lives. This is your song segment. It may be quite simple, but now that it's done. Thanks, as always, to our sponsors, Club Garibaldi's. And uh, it is two minutes after the hour, 7 o'clock. You're listening to 91.7 FM, WMSC Milwaukee, Frontier Radio Alive, and listener-supported broadcast of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. 
where it is 29 degrees Fahrenheit tonight. Some cloudy skies gradually becoming clear. Uh, Going to get real cold. 23 degrees. Uh, tomorrow, mostly sunny with a high around 45 with gusty winds up to 30 miles per hour. Thanks again to Tarek Sabar for being our guest tonight. Of course, thanks for having me. Regale yeah. everyone with your <laughs> your info tomorrow. Um, I'm playing a Cactus Club tomorrow with uh, the D-Mix and Machine Girl. Machine Girl's out of New York, I believe. D-Mix is another Milwaukee artist um, for Melt. So that's a Cactus Club. Show's at 9. So, yeah. And uh, if people want to find your music... Where would they go? Bandcamp or Google, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> either one, because I have my own Bandcamp, and there's close up stream. They have stuff of mine as well. Um, so either one, yeah, Tarek Sabar, T A R E K space S A B B A R. Um, All right. Google yeah, or Bandcamp, you can find them there. So that's what I use. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yep. Well, thanks again yeah, for talking course. with us and playing for us. And we want to thank everybody out there in Radio Land for tuning in to tonight's edition of Local Live on WMSE. Local Live is a production of WMSE Radio, recorded and broadcast live from the Bob and Jeannie Friedman Live Performance Studio on the downtown campus of the Milwaukee School of Engineering. Local Live is produced by Aaron and myself and engineered by Billy Cicerelli. Video by Moleskin Productions. Hospitality for Local Live artists provided by Cedar Teeth Pizza, who can be found online at cedarteeth.com. Anodyne Coffee, who can be found online at anodynecoffee.com. And by Sprecher Brewing Company. More information at SpreckerBrewery.com. For upcoming guests and archives of past local live performances, visit WMSE.org. And tune in again next Tuesday at 6 p.m. for another edition of Local Live. You don't want to miss this one. Special duo performance by Chris and Barry of Field Report. We're very excited to have them on. Hope you'll tune in. That's going to do it for us. We'll see you next week. Stay tuned for Midnight Radio.